Hi designers, it's Haley with Silver Moon Branding and Design. And in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make a wine bottle and cork using Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Dimension. So let's get started. So first step is to open up a blank Illustrator template. It doesn't really matter what size unless you want to be very specific to the specs from your client. So if you have a real bottle from a client and you're trying to recreate it to the exact proportions, come down to the listing. Most of the time, if you're looking at a bottle listing like this one, you can scroll down and they'll list the dimensions for you, which is super helpful. So this one is 11.4 inches tall and a diameter of three inches. So we can make our shape and illustrator those sizes. So I'm just gonna copy that. Let me just put this on the side here so we're able to reference it. I've saved the image of the bottle because we're going to trace half of it. So I will drag that on here and I'll also make a rectangle. So click our rectangle tool. I'll just click and I'll say we want it three inches by 11.4 inches. And that'll make a rectangle with the specs that we need to size the bottle to. I'll drag the rectangle to the center of my artboard. I'll put the bottle in the center of my artboard and I'll scale it holding shift until it meets those specs. This way, when we import it into Dimension, we will have a very accurately sized render. So when you place your artwork, everything should be very much to scale and it just makes life a little bit easier. Now that I have this rectangle, I'm going to drag a ruler. To get your rulers to show in Illustrator, I hit Command R to show mine. I'm on a Mac. If you're on a Windows, I believe it would just be Control R, but don't quote me. So once you get the rulers up, you can also find them by going to view rulers and hit hide or show rulers. And I will drag one over from there right to the center. That's going to tell us where we need to stop our tracing. So sometimes I'll lock this layer so that I don't accidentally move anything around and create another layer on top. You can name this reference and name this one artwork. I'll grab the pen tool next and start tracing. This bottle is at an angle, so we have to imagine it if it was directly straight on and not tilted one way or the other. We're gonna make a nice even cross section of this bottle. So I'm gonna start out just by tracing. I will come down here and make my outline. I try to get as close to that outline as possible, but you can get a little creative because unless you have it exactly a cross section of the bottle, you're going to have a little bit of warping from the camera lens and etc. So it does take a little bit of interpretation. Looks like there's a slight curve this direction. And I'm going to keep going this way. Okay. Let me clean up this angle and make it curved. Same with this one. And I might bring these down a little bit. Same with that anchor point. It would be more helpful if I had an outline already going. And if your anchor points aren't smooth enough, you can use the smooth tool and trace over the direction you're trying to get the anchor points to go and it smooths it really nicely to make it look more organic. And you don't have to play with the Bezier curves as much to get it your way, you smooth it and move on. Now we're gonna trace the inside of the bottle. So to get the width of the glass, I start by selecting my outline. I'll hide this for now. So I'll select my outline here, and I will hit Option Nudge and make a copy. You could also copy and paste, but the point is just to duplicate that line you've just created. And then I will increase the stroke until it's about the depth that I'd want. You look from this line and the outline, and I'm happy with that depth. Maybe let me go up one more. That looks good. And now I will go to Object, Path, and Outline Stroke. And it's a solid fill, and I want to flip that to Outline. Since this is our outside line and this is our inside line, I'm going to take our scissors tool, and I'm going to click on the external points with that because we don't need the outside outline. And then I will move the anchor points to touch. 
Same with this. And now I highlight both of the paths and I hit Command J to join them so that it's all one combined shape. And you can see that here when I flip the outline that it is all one shape. But I do want to make a quick tweak and I'm going to delete the inside line there because they're not a natural part of the shape. And I'm also going to, le to delete the top mouth of this piece. That way when we take it into dimension, it has an opening at the top. If you left it closed, it would be closed and we all know wine bottles are open. So this helps us recreate that. And now I'll select both of these anchor points and I will drag them in. I don't need them all the way around it. I want them to have a little flatness on the top. Yeah, just like that. And then on these curves too, I'm gonna take both of those. Oop just these two, it's those afternoon showers here in Florida. And you'll see both of those are curved, so we wanna copy it. And then to add a little more of an organic feel, I'll come and I'll just make this ever so slightly curved. Same up here, cause glass can have hard angles, but I think it looks a little more natural when there's a slight curve and shape to it. And then at the bottom, depending on your wine bottle, this one doesn't have a deep inset, but there is an inset. So I'm gonna take these anchor points. I'm going to hold shift and I'm gonna move them upwards. And sometimes I'll make it a little thicker because it is a thicker base to keep the um, wine from tipping over as easily. So I'll also come over to the edge sometimes and I'll thicken that. It will make a difference in the light, depending on how you have the bottle lit, it will make a difference when we get to dimension. And there are these dots on the base. I don't find them important for my purposes of how to um, mock up a wine label. So I'm gonna leave them off, but if that's an important detail to you, let me know and I can show you how to make those. Okay, now we have the half cross section of our wine bottle done. So now that I have it selected, I'm gonna to come to 3D and materials and I'm going to hit revolve. And if I choose a different color, also be sure to flip from the outline to the fill so that it's solid. And now you can see that we have our wine bottle shape created. Next, we're going to create our cork. So I'll come over here and I will drop this cork. So I wanna make sure that the size will match. So I'll come bring the reference file over here. Come to opacity, let me click multiply so I can remove that white background pretty easily. And size this just so it will fit. I'll log my reference layer, turn back on my artwork layer and trace this halfway. Let me use this rectangle to draw a box and then drag my ruler to the center. That way we'll have something nice and even. Now I'll draw another box and I'm picking this end, the bottom end, and then the top end that we can see here to make sure I'm matching the height of our reference material. And then just the outside edges, I'm going to click using my, I click A as my shortcut, but using this arrow and I'll curve those in slightly because you can see that it has a curve. All right, that one's pretty easy. We'll go to 3D materials. We will click revolve again and see that we've made our cylinder, our cork with a slight curve. We have all of the pieces that we need now. So highlight just one at a time, go to file, export selection, make sure that it shows up there. I'll close and click on the wine bottle again, go to export selection. And now you can see there are two separate instances. I'll name one cork and I'll name one the bottle or better yet, wine bottle and make sure they are both selected. I will choose this OBJ file type and click export. Now you can see that I have the OBJ files ready to go. So it's time to open dimension. Okay, so when you open a new canvas in Dimension, it gives you some defaults here. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop the wine bottle in to see our scale. And you can see it came in really, really large. So just use your scroll on your mouse or trackpad to keep shrinking because we made this to scale. So it's just a little larger than what Dimension was anticipating we would bring in. 
Now you can see it's sitting below the horizon. So to get it to sit directly on the ground, I select the object and come over here to this move to ground. It's also command period. So then you click that and it moves it to the ground plane. So it's sitting on there nicely and in full view. We'll also take our cork. We'll drag that in and there's our cork. Now it is time to style and choose the materials for these items. I'll start with the glass bottle. We'll scroll down to find our standard materials. And since this is a wine bottle, I'm choosing glass. And I drag and drop the glass material over the shape and you can see it snaps and makes it a glass bottle. Oh, let me re rename these really quick so that I know what I am selecting wine bottle and cork. I can hover over this layer here, click the arrow, and it'll give me more options for this bottle texture. If I go back to my material here, I can see that the bottle is green. So if I want to match that color directly, I'll click I in Illustrator and then I'll bring up my eyedropper tool and I'll select the green that I think would be the correct shade. It might take a few tries, but I'm going to go with this really nice olive -y kind of green. I copied that hex value, I come back here, I click on this white square, it gives me a field to enter the hex value, and I paste it in, and it looks pretty dark. Let me check my render preview and see how it looks. That's really dark compared to what I have put in. I might be able to play with the translucence down here. I'm going to do 95% translucence just to give it a little bit of that cloudiness. The filtered glass helps keep and protect the flavors of that wine. I can play with the index of refraction to maybe increase the way that the light is coming through this bottle. Okay, I think some of this can be changed in the lighting, so I'm not going to sweat the color of the glass at this moment because some things will change with time. So I will actually click back and start styling our cork.